So next up on the Fees FM Breakfast Show, I'd love to welcome Cam from Sigma. Thank you so much for joining me on the show this morning, mate. How are you? I'm not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. How, how are you? How are yeah. you keeping? All good, all good. How 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 have the last few months been? And obviously, we've had lockdown. We've had, you know, a crazy time for everyone. Um, you know, I, I guess the good thing for you guys, being producers and DJs, is that you can you can presumably still make music when you're at home and stuff. I mean, it must, you know, you can still carry on. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously it's, it's been a very strange time uh, for everybody at the moment, but I mean, for, for us, uh, we've obviously, cut, all of our shows for this summer have been sort of, sort of cut for now until obviously we know what's going on, so it's a bit strange because it's the first summer I think I've, I've actually done, I've not done one festival for, for quite some time, so <laughs> I've got a lot more time on our hands, but yeah, you're right, we, we it, you know, I guess every cloud is a silver like you know we're back in the studio a lot more we're finishing stuff off we're kind of getting stuck in so um you know it's um it's difficult for everyone but i mean we're we're, we're, we're getting by yeah wicked i mean I, I want to take things back to sort of how you guys begun obviously we're we're a student station here and um we're, we're often interested in how kind of artists journey begun i know you guys you guys met at the university of leeds um i'm just interested in sort of how how did that how did your journey begin presumably you were Going out and about on the uni event scene, doing D and B nights. Um, what what did your the start of your journey, I guess, look like when the pair of you met? Um, well, I was doing sort of quite big uh, drum and bass parties in Leeds, um, uh, and Joe uh, he, he I was working in a record shop just the weekend just to kind of get a bit, bit of extra money. And I remember he came in, he put some posters down for like a, a hip hop event he was doing. So um, he was quite sort of hum, humble with it. He really sort of tell me much about it. He didn't tell me much about his skills either, but it just it turned out that he was an ex DMC champion. So oh, he's wow. a bit of a bad man on the yeah. <laughs> so he's a bit of a bad man on the deck. So I was like, well, you kept that one quiet. So um, we ended up sort of like I got him to come and play in the back room with a lot of the hip hop people I was booking, and um, and then we just kind of like got we ended up getting on really well. And um, he had a kind of I think he was doing a music production course at, at uni, and we ended up sort of just making really crap music in the studio together. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're still doing it. <laughs> like, it's just the music's got a little bit better so um, yeah man um, I mean it's just a kind of long journey but it's definitely all started at uni and I guess probably back then it would have been harder to to you know it would have been harder to produce I guess now you can go online you can find the sounds you need you can get making music you know 10 years ago it would have been a lot difficult I guess yeah I mean I think it's um, these days as well like the kind of technology and everything's massively you know I think we had computers back then that you could have like four sort of audio files on it or whatever four channels of audio and it would all start glitching and stuff whereas now obviously the computers are just beasts and uh, yeah. the technology is much better but I think it is that these days that you've got so much information at your fingertips um, with like I said with tutorials on, on YouTube and stuff like that that it's much easier to learn yeah um, I'm interested in then also how, how the sort of your style evolved because I guess you know when I think of drum and bass and and typical like my experiences of uni at drum and bass is often quite uh, intense and you know I, I, you never really see it in the mainstream charts I wonder what did you guys make a conscious decision to kind of you know make upbeat music make music which could chart well make music with like melody and lyrics to it you know taking drum and bass kind of origins but developing on that in you know gen general dance music house music that kind of thing as well um i think just we've always been into into sort of good good music i guess i'm not saying our music's good or anything but <laughs> i mean i just like i think we're always into music with like you know melody and, and songs and stuff so i mean i think you know there's 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 two sides i guess to to drum and bass as far as we saw it there was the kind of um club side and then i guess the more radio friendly stuff and yeah. i think when we when we first started releasing tunes we were like well we, we always did because obviously it was traditionally on vinyl so we'd always do one side that was more for the clubs and the other side which is more for I guess kind of radio although right. we weren't ever aiming for radio but more just more sort of palatable to you know everyone else sort yeah. of thing so it's always been something we were into and I mean we've just kind of st stuck to that formula and I guess that you know as we kind of got better at writing music and stuff our kind of if the songs got a bit better and the people we work with got better and it all just sort of kind of improved together and then obviously 2014 comes around I mean I'm sure you've been asked about this loads but you know uh, only like your third single after properly signing for three B, um, nobody to love comes out. That that went to number one. How did that success sort of, sort of snowball? How was that experience sort of when when you first realised that was taking off? Well, I mean, it was all to be honest. It's all was a, a bit of a blur. I mean, you can never really prep yourself for the sort of. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, obviously, it's incredibly amazing the fact we had number one, 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 number one and stuff, but it also changes your, your world completely. So, you know, I think there's a lot of things happening and everything becomes very really fast paced. And, um, you know, we went from sort of playing little underground sort of drama based clubs, which we still love to play at, at like four in the morning, barely getting paid and, you know, barely getting petrol money, to then suddenly playing at these huge, like, arenas and stuff like that. So, you know, it's a kind of mass shift and everything and I think it's also with those situations you have to kind of manage your ego somewhat because yeah. you know it's quite easy to get carried away with your own self-worth and um, I mean we were quite good because I think it happened to us that we were slightly older but you can see how it can happen with certain people because yeah. you know it's definitely a big ego massive massage for sure yeah but I mean I want to talk about the new song as well obviously High On You came out came out the start of last month you worked on that with John Newman um Tell me a bit about that track. That's a that's a you know that's another classic kind of. It's a real dance tune. It's upbeat. It's got that like you know a, an amazing powerful vocal on it. That must have been really fun to make. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've always wanted to work with him. I mean, when we when we first started come through and we did Maybe to Love and I was talking about the arenas and stuff we did a lot of kind of radio uh, arenas things all yeah, over the country yeah. and he was it was around the same time as him having his big hits uh-huh. um, so we always used to see him and we used to have a couple of drinks with him and stuff he always got very well we always wanted to do a tune with him because his voice just worked so well yeah. with dance music um, and he's just a really safe guy and we, we really like working with people obviously that are just like us who are just kind of down to earth in, in some respects so, I mean I, I, it, it was just the, the process was just very easy and he's just a super nice dude are you are you guys still working with them now? I saw on an Instagram story the other day you guys look like you're in the studio still. Was that was that from recently or? Yeah, I mean we had to do a kind of a different version of the track for it was for like a TV performance, but it's obviously all weird now because you have to social distance. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you know it's a, we had to kind of re-record something and we had to do a few interviews, but we couldn't really sit near each other. It was just all very strange. But yeah, I mean we, that was just on Friday. We had, we had to get new new things. Yeah, I think one of the one of the Sunday TV shows. Right. Um, I'm also interested in sort of you know your experiences of of Manchester. We're a student station up here in Manchester, and and you guys have obviously come from you know originally kind of the underground scene. And Manchester is obviously a breeding ground for you know your kind of music, but you know new music generally. I'm just wondering your experiences of gigging in Manchester. Obviously, there's the Warehouse Project, which is just mad. I mean, you guys must have been up here quite a few times. Well, I actually used to live in Manchester. I, I used to live in uh, Timperley, so oh, I was there for like four years. Oh, so, right. so yeah, man. I mean, I love. I mean, it's you know, I think it's an amazing city. It's um, you know, the people are incredible. I, I can't say a bad word about Manchester apart from. I mean, it's too far from London, but you can't really talk about that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, I mean, in terms of like the scene and stuff, I mean, it was always I. I, I think. I never because because um, we were so busy with gigs and stuff. Whenever I had a weekend off, I never went went out. Right. <laughs> it was just like it's quite nice to just sit yeah, down. Yeah, got a rest. Um, I mean, I say that now, but I, you know, obviously, in reflection of everything that's gone on, I would be out every weekend now. <laughs> if I had a but, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was um, it was a great city. There's a lot of really cool bars. There's a wicked like. Uh, music scene up there and I think you know it's constantly growing and I think that you know what I've always found is it's a little bit behind sort of I guess London yeah, because obviously yeah. London's so ahead of his time in, in yeah, some respects yeah. but it's not that far behind and yeah. it's really exciting there's so much young talent coming through yeah. now yeah. Um, I'd be interested in kind of your take on what's going on at the minute with the live music scene I know the um, you know, we've seen it in Manchester. Some of the some of the main sort of venues have been threatened of being closed down at the minute. Obviously, the live music scene generally has been massive affected by the pandemic. You were talking earlier about not probably being able to get out and you know tour tour the new singles and do festivals and get your DJ sets out there. You know, it's it's a worrying time, I guess, for for live music at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really worrying, mate. I mean, it's you know, it's a very strange time where. There's no. I mean, I think out of all the industries really out there, we're going to be probably the last ones back because obviously it's, it's generally big, bigger crowds. Um, it's more problematic having people together um, where you can't do the whole social distancing thing. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's definitely quite quite worrying. I mean, it affects everybody from you know venues to DJs to people who work in the venues to touring parties to the airlines that we work, we go on. You know, yeah, it's just like yeah. everything. So yeah, I mean, we just don't really. It, it's hard because obviously at the start of it, it was just a bit like, uh, yeah, we can deal with this. It's, it won't last that long and then he gets like halfway through and you're like well it's actually quite stressful now yeah, yeah. and then um, and then now we're kind of like well I, there's no point stressing out because we can't control the situation it's just got to do its thing it's got to take its course and then hopefully you know hopefully next year when it comes back in everyone will be up for you know having a proper party and like, we won't take stuff for granted I mean I'm 
I certainly won't be taking um, sort of 10 a.m. flights to uh, <laughs> wherever in Europe for granted anymore. <laughs> so, like, I won't be whinging anymore. Exactly. Well, mate, we are so excited for you know you guys to get back out there. We want to come see you live. We can't wait for everything that's to come for you guys. The brand new single, uh, High On You, with John Newman is out now. Cam from Sigma, thank you so much for joining me on the show this morning. Thanks, mate. Have a great day. Cheers, and, uh, like everyone, everyone listening out there to keep your head up. I know it's hard times out there, but we're all in this together. Nice one, fella. You too, mate. Cheers. All right, bro. Take care, mate. Adam McDonald on Fuse FM. Fuse FM.